Hi, I'm Mike with UTest. I'm here at SCNA again, sitting down with, sitting down with Brad Wilkening, who is a co-founder of DevMind Software, and they're very active in the community, and Brad has been active in the community for a while. Um, they has, he has a Chicago, you co-run the Chicago WebConf, and also uh, the, the Craftsmanship, or the Craftsman, uh, Craftsman Night Out, and the uh, Open Hack, you just mentioned, I just learned about that one. Um, so. That's a that's a bunch of uh, events to be involved in. Uh, you know, going and going to meetings already takes up enough time. But running all those meetings, I mean, how do you uh, how do you manage doing all these events? And and actually, and also, what what is Craftsman Night Out in Open Hack? Mm -hmm. So I'll start out with. Uh <clears throat> Chicago WebConf. So we saw that there was a need in Chicago for a conference that was focused on front-end technologies and design. We think that's a really important area. We think that there's a there's kind of this new position coming out of nowhere called the front-end developer, right. and I think we need to foster that. Um, and so it's not just design; it's it's knowing those tools, all the UX, the, the JavaScript, and the CSS. Mm -hmm. And knowing how to organize that stuff well can can really help your project right. go along, if you will. And so uh, we saw a need there, and we were like, okay, well, let's give it a try. And we sold out the first year 115 tickets, and then we sold out this year with 300 and something tickets. So uh, one of the things we try to do with it is we try to keep it less expensive, so it's attainable to people that don't usually it's attend. $75 for the full price? <coughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, we're sending out that survey, I think, later today or sometime soonish, that is going to ask whether or not people really just want to pay more money so we have more room and more... Right. You know, it's easier to spend five thousand dollars on food if you had more money to work with. Right. But we're, you know, we're bootstrapping it, and so there's a lot of overhead that we kind of have. Iterating. To <laughs> yes, we are in fact iterating. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to do that again next year. It's sometime in the fall. Uh, this year it was October sixth, which also happens to be my birthday, which means it was a really terrible birthday. Uh, well, um, we're excited for <laughs> right. I mean, for a conference, you just kind of want to get her done. Yeah. Uh, with my other stuff, it's kind of different than that, though, right? Like, Software Crestman's Night Out, the way that I get people to come to that is I basically just tell them, well, we basically get together and talk shit about our projects. The second I say that to somebody, they're just like, oh, I'm going to that. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a good time. It's exactly. cathartic, right? You yeah. come out, you have a cheeseburger, and you, yes, you a little bit. have a good time with it. And it's always fun, uh, you know, the no trolling rule of... Mm -hmm. Recruiters have shown up in the past and we're typically very abusive to them, so they've found that they don't show up anymore. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, we kind of want to keep it like that, where it's all just a bunch of coders in a room kind of hanging out. Right. Uh, occasionally laptops come out, um, you know, that's probably one fifth of the time, but we're totally cool with that as well. It can get as nerdy as it needs to. Yeah, well, coders going to code. <laughs> yeah, coder, yes, coders going to code. <laughs> Haters gonna hate. Is that yeah. the meme we're pulling from? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, I, 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 I'll, I, I'm shameless. I love the friends here. Um, but that one has like 300 something people. And it's on on Meetup, and uh, that took a while to grow it out, and it's it's grown over the years. It was originally called Software Craftsman Who Happened to Like Whiskey, and that occurred uh, because I was like, I don't know, maybe some people will join this. It's kind of silly, and I know I have a bunch of friends that drink whiskey and write software, so let's do it. And like in the first month we had like 50 people that signed up for it and yeah. the, the attendance was like tw uh, 20 or 30 people every time. So oh. I was like, oh, apparently this is a good idea. Yeah, so yeah. then I kept getting people that were like, hey, you know, I don't like whiskey. I'm like, it doesn't matter, the name's silly. Yeah, just, yeah. Did really you see how long this name is? Like, yeah. Software craftsmen who happen to like whiskey. Nobody ever came up with a name like that where they weren't entirely kidding. Um, <clears throat> but uh, after we got up to a certain point, basically every month we have at least 20 or 30 people. Um, we get a wide variety too. It's not just people that are doing the Ruby or the Java. It's people yeah. all across the board. One embedded guy comes pretty often, and he's super cool. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it is literally every possible community that I could think of yeah. just coming well, up. Because it's it's not tied to this isn't Ruby devs who like this. This isn't uh, Python is. Pythonists who like beer, and this is it's just craftsman, and mm -hmm. it's a very broad, you know, if you if you're somebody who cares about your craft, then come on out and write right. code. And it gets pretty nerdy sometimes. Yeah. But you know, after about being there for two hours, basically we're all just incoherently talking yeah. trash to each other, which is a natural environment. For well, and that's one of the important things we sometimes forget when we're thinking about our tools or, or identifying too closely with our tool sets is that 
when, when you kind of put syntax away and platform fights away, we all have basically the same interests and the same kind of... We all have the same problems. Yeah. The, we're, we're the entire same group of people. And, you know, the there's always this kind of animosity between the communities that I think is just completely silly. Mm -hmm. And so I'd say everybody just come to all the meetups. I've been going to the Python ones because they're, uh, just, fun. they're just fun. And, yeah. you know, I learned something about Python. And, uh, there's something to be learned there. Because Brian really will put it, every meeting is the greatest meeting ever. <laughs> uh, yes, he is a uh, he's the only other extrovert in Chicago yeah, yeah. as a software engineer. It's me and Brian Ray. That's yeah. our uh, our claim to fame, clearly. Yeah. And uh, but you have one other group as well, <clears throat> the Open Hack. Yeah. So here's here's where it gets weird, right? Is that there's this thing that was posted on GitHub, and it was openhack.github.com, mm -hmm. and we noticed it, and we noticed that there wasn't a Chicago one. So we figured the natural response to that is going to be to go, hey, we'll take it. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we did. Yeah. And it's gone from zero people to, I think it's at like 70 in two weeks. Wow. And I'd like to note also that it's not a GitHub thing. It's just an open hat thing. Yeah. And we didn't realize that at the time. We weren't trying to figure out what it was or why it was. Yeah. We were just like, oh, we have a meetup that's kind of like that. Yeah. Let's try to transverse it into this. And we have another one called uh, um, <coughs> Open Source Bug Bash. Okay. Um, but we uh, we limit it to 12 people, and they all have to be fairly experienced. Mm -hmm. Just to join the group, we ask questions to people that haven't been delivering software so for a while. Like, can't so, answer. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's interesting. You, you have a, um, a gated group. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to meet a certain threshold. And that's that kind of an interesting perspective for a lot of uh, user groups who are trying to figure out how to appeal to people who've gone past. I just interviewed Napolito and he talked about always bringing in new blood and having to have the introductory topics, but how do you satisfy people who've been down the road a while? Mm -hmm. so. And for open, for open source bug bash, it's kind of a weird thing because one of the reasons that these folks are coming is because it's a smaller group. And they just like small groups. Right. I talked to uh, Evan White one time, and come to find out, he thinks that smaller groups are better. The big after party, he didn't like it so much. We ended up back at uh, back at his hotel room, and this is not an appropriate statement, although anybody that knows me <laughs> is probably expecting it to become one. Uh, but we, we were there with uh, Aaron Kalin, uh, Corey Emke from Trunk Club, uh, uh, <clears throat> and just this nice group of people who all just kind of wanted to have some good whiskey and sit around and and shoot the shit. Yeah. And that's kind of the same people that we end up getting, uh, minus whiskey plus laptop, uh, at Open Source Bug Bash. We actually had uh, somebody you interviewed last time, uh, Andy Lester, at Chicago Web Comp, you yeah. interviewed Andy right. Lester. And uh, we met Andy there, and he's been... Uh, a cool friend of ours uh, since then. Yeah, he's yeah. a very interesting guy. He's yeah. On, on my neck of the woods, which. It's where Jesus lost his shoes. Yeah, yeah, we're out there. out there. But uh, yeah, so that's interesting. So you're able to have a pretty open thing where just anybody can come into it with the the, uh, the craftsman night out. Um, just, you know, it's kind of an open door policy, but then you have the, the open hack, which also sounds like it's a little bit more open, but the. the um, the, the higher end, or, or more, a little bit more uh, sophisticated group of the open source bug bash, which I'm presuming you're committing code back into open source projects. Yeah. Is there anything particular, or you, you focus on? Oh no, no. Like we're just starting. We're just starting to figure that part out. And really, what what we uh, do, what we're going to do, more or less, um, is we're going to have people write on the board what they're going to hack on, and whether or not they're willing to take a pair. Okay. And so. Somebody comes in and they're fixing a bug with Rails. Somebody else walks in and says, "Oh yeah, I saw that bug. I want to hear with that dude to knock that one out." Um, so that's basically more or less the way that we try to approach it. Now, Open Hack, since it's going to have a larger audience, potentially some younger blood and some right. more junior folks, uh, we're going to have that same format, um, but we're going to have that same format in an environment where it's going to be pretty reasonable. We're doing it in the Braintree space, okay. which I've never been there, but I heard it's really super awesome and huge. So we're probably going to have a pretty big turnout for those events, and you know, it's, it's there's a good reason people are coming there. People are coming there because it is an open source thing, and they do want to kind of help out with that stuff. Yeah. And so. have you reached out to any uh, local open source guys, or are you just like, oh, this is a cool project. We like this thing, so we want to support it. So is it 
it's anything. It's literally going to be a whiteboard where you write your name and what what library you're hacking on, perhaps you know which bug you're going to try to attack. But it's more or less just to you know create the environment of approachability for anybody that's hacking on something. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, we still don't know how we're going to link that where that dude is. Kind of thing to put a number on their head. Well, what? I'm sorry. Let's say that I, 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 I walk up the board and I'm like, Brad Wilkening, working on this, this. Oh, and you come in, you don't Nobody know knows who I am, right? right? We haven't figured that part out yet. Oh, well, you just be like, hey, who's Brad? Yeah. <laughs> and right. he was working on... If it gets over 20, that's going to get a little gnarly. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so, but going to the, uh, what you talked about with the smaller groups and what Evan said about the smaller groups, um, so you, you, you said you prefer the smaller groups because they're a little bit... Well, why is that? Why, why do you prefer... Why did Evan say he prefers um, smaller groups over larger groups? Well, I'm going to wholesale just speak for Evan right now. Yeah. It's because... I don't have anything funny to say here, so it's not going to be any fun. I'm kidding. So um, I think it's actually just kind of... It's a dichotomy. It's a natural dichotomy in human behavior. You like to have some quiet time. You like to have some busy time. Mm -hmm. And you need both. And both are very healthy and have healthy and have benefits. So if you do both, you're going to be happy with the results of it. Yeah. And you know that's not a very objective thing to say. I'm basically just saying, hey, it'll be amazing. But but more okay. or less, there are also just people that don't function well in larger groups of people. They're going to try to consolidate themselves into a single group, and that is a totally natural introvert thing to do. Mm -hmm. And even us extroverts like me and Brian Ray uh, are willing to every now and then say, yeah. That was a cool meetup with all five of us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And we got a lot done. We talked about some cool stuff, and who who cares? But it's it's always that it's different it's environment. It's score. It's okay. it's keeping it real. <laughs> I, 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 guess. I, I, I I I like I said, shameless. I yes, we are most definitely keeping it real <laughs> as often as possible. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's the the kind of the onset of those those events and. Some people try to use those for hiring, you know, like there's a new one, I forgot the name of it, but it's basically just, it's a recruiting firm that's putting on these presentations that may be great, um, and we're not kind of doing that. Right. We, we like the effect of people showing up and interacting with each other more than we do staring at, at the guy talking. Yeah. We, you know, that's an okay thing from time to time, but none of our groups really, really harness that or give that a hug. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having yeah. the time to sit down. Thank you.